Well, great to see everybody today. Um, I am super appreciative of everybody taking your time out today to join our webinar. Um, so for anyone new here today, just want to walk you through a little bit about DoorVest and our mission. Um, our mission is to advance financial security for all um, through investment home ownership. So we enable inv individuals like yourself to invest and own 100% of a single family home entirely online. Our homes are exclusive, meaning you won't find them anywhere outside of DoorVest. And we also um, guarantee your rental income and maintenance for a year. Terms and conditions apply. First of all, um, Amanda is out on an emergency, so I'm stepping in today to host. Um, my name is Christina, and I am part of the marketing team here. I started um, my real estate investing journey through managing hundreds of um, large-scale renovation projects. And now you'll often see me writing our monthly Dorvis Digest newsletters, supporting our client partners team, and increasing Dorvis visibility. We get over to Andrew Luong, our co-founder and CEO, to introduce himself, and then Chris Ono after. Um, so without further ado, Andrew, can you um, share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um... And hey, everyone, excited to be here. Uh, this is a topic I'm particularly fond of, uh, and I think Chris Ono is as well. Um, but yeah, I'm Andrew, co-founder and CEO of DoorBest. Uh, DoorBest, as Chris, uh, Christina mentioned earlier, makes it e easy for folks to buy and own an investment home online. Um, a little bit about the backstory is uh, I stumbled into real estate investing kind of the old fashioned DIY way um, and through sort of the, the school of hard knocks was able to to build a, a small portfolio for myself um, along the way um, spending time with friends co-workers and whatnot um, uh, time and time again people would ask me like hey I have some money saved up uh, I heard you do real estate can you show me how to get started um, and I would like come up with this long checklist of uh, A through Z as to how you do it. It was like a 30 point checklist. I would hand it off to them, send them off on their way. Uh, and then I'd bump into them like three or four months later. Uh, and time and time, time and time again, um, the answer was couldn't get started. Um, so at some point, uh, early, early 2020, that became the, the genesis of DoorBest um, and kind of the, the, the foundation uh, of the business that, that we work on today. Thank you. Definitely can relate to being one of those people who, you know, would ask time and time again for advice on real estate investing and just never got started. Um, but I'm now one of Dorvis customers who, you know, Dorvis helped me jumpstart my real estate investing journey. And Chris Ono, can you share a little bit about your story and um, what you do here at Dorvis? Yes, uh, excited to be here. My name is Chris Ono, head of BizOps over here at Dorvis. Uh, just recently had my first year anniversary here. It feels like three years, but uh, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, similar to Andrew, my investment, my personal investment uh, started when I first picked up the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Got super inspired, but had no clue how to get started. I think I fumbled my way through certain seminars, talking to real estate agents, trying to figure things out, uh, and eventually had enough guts to save up a down payment and bought our first investment home over in Austin, Texas, when we're still residing in Los Angeles. I'm now here, I still have that rental property, but I uh, just have a lot of appreciation in real estate in terms of what it's done for me in my personal life, which is why I purposely remain within PropTech. So I've spent some time over at Zillow with Realtor.com, also with the local builder building ADUs. And when I found out about DoorVest and its mission, it really connected with me too. I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, how did you get started on your real estate journey? It was a hodgepodge answer of like, I read this book, I went to Bigger Pockets, I listened to like 50 podcasts, and I found and it was just not helpful at all. And so being able to contribute to a company that is so mission driven is like super fruitful. And I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you so much. And happy one year again, Chris Ono. All right. Well, um, today's agenda, it's going to be a focused conversation today. We're talking about cash out refinances. And why it makes sense, what are they? We'll also have a live example. Um, so Chris Ono will be walking through a spreadsheet with you all. Um, once you stay through the end, we'll also share some exciting updates. I'll be moderating the Q&A, so feel free to 
you know, add any of your questions there. We'll try to include that in our discussion today. If not, we'll definitely save time towards the end to answer any questions. I'm going to kick it over to Andrew again. Sorry for picking on you to uh, start the conversation here, but um, I think a lot of people are wondering why we decided to talk about cash out refinance. And typically our webinars are quite high level. We have, you know, Fireside with you last time, which was incredible. Today we're, we're doing a little bit more of a focused um, conversation. So what do you think? Why are we discussing this topic today? Yeah. Um, maybe I'll kind of give you two examples. One is a, at, at a macro level and um, pro probably the other one at a more micro level. Um, so I guess at the, the macro level, um, it's no surprise to I think everyone here, um, the last few years prices have just been skyrocketing. Um, and so what that means for an existing real estate investor, um, an existing Dorvest customer, perhaps maybe a not yet Dorvest customer, but someone that owns a primary or an investment home, et cetera, is uh, chances are you've probably accumulated quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of equity in your home. Um, and that equity is kind of, uh, it, it's simply trapped um, and potentially can be leveraged through uh, re refinance um, in order to be deployed elsewhere. Uh, obviously, refinancing, um, uh, you could deploy and buy more real estate, uh, or perhaps you, you could invest somewhere else or, or maybe even do a, a project in your house or, or something of that nature. Um, that's kind of at a macro level. Um, for my, I guess, at, at a more micro level, um, I, I mentioned this earlier, like I, I got into real estate. It started off with one home uh, in Sacramento, California. One led to two, two led to uh, three and, and so on and so forth. Um, and a lot of actually how I was able to, to build that portfolio um, was strategically uh, cash out refining homes. Uh, uh, and actually earlier this year did, did a, a couple of cash out refines to buy another drug home too. Awesome. Awesome. And just taking it a step back here, actually, Chris Ono, I think we have a handful of very experienced um, investors in the audience, but also some who are newer to this topic. Can you share a little bit more, a quick one-liner on what it is and why it might make sense for some people? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I tried to find the simplest way to explain cash out refi. And really in its simplest form is, you initially buy a home by taking out a loan and it's based off of how much they value this home. The bank underwrites to say, your home is valued at this much. Over time, there are things like equity pay down that you are doing th through monthly payments or regardless if it's your residence paying down your mortgage, you're starting to build this equity. And essentially uh, equity is how much your home is worth versus how much you owe. And that Delta is your equity in the simplest form. In order to be able to use that built up equity, a cash out refi is in essence, taking on a new loan at the new value and being able to pay the old uh, loan balance off. Whatever remains with you is part of the loan that you can go and use. It is tax-free and you can go on to do whatever it is. I think. For an owner occupant, it's pretty common to take up that equity to do things like home renovations, to continue to make your uh, primary home nice and keep up and uh, make it look modern. Uh, but it's also a great way to do so with investment properties to continue to leverage and increase that return on equity. Great, thanks. And I think um, a question that we have right now is, you know, some folks, um, have a primary residence at a lower interest rate today. And so does it make sense for someone with a lower interest rate um, to tap into a cash out refi and assume a higher rate? That's, that's a great question. And I think it's going to be a pretty common one that we're going to hear today. A lot of people during the pandemic, when uh, borrowing costs were very, very low, they got fantastic interest rates. And there's no doubt about it. You compare that to what it is today. And, uh, you know, you have to think about that, right? Like you have some built-in equity. When cost of money was cheaper, your property value tended to go up. When the cost of money is higher, it tends to slow down, right? So there's this interesting dynamic. Uh, to answer that question, it really depends on what your strategy is, right? If you're interested in continuing to grow your portfolio, uh, it's not a bad strategy. 
you have equity tapped in that you can go and extract and you can essentially continue to do that. So I think it really depends on what your strategy and your goal is. I don't think there's a one size fits all. Not to not to say that I do not understand. I'm also sitting on, you know, my primary residence at three and a half. And it's got to be probably some tremendous opportunity for me to potentially cash out to be able to leverage into something else. Yeah, that that makes total sense. I think, you know, thinking about your investment strategy is like key in in all of this. Um, and having a 3% interest rate is definitely um, something to consider. Um, Andrew, I think you were talking about, you know, you did a cash out refi recently um, in today's market. Maybe you can give us a little bit more. Can you share a little bit more details on that? Was your interest rate prior to that higher than the cash out refi um, interest that you got this year? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, so I did one earlier this year. Um, my interest rate uh, was nominally higher after. Um, so I think I bought it at a time when it was like five and a half or six. And I think I uh, cashed out at about six and a half or so. Um, I think the calculus for me was like that delta was small enough and the equity, the amount of equity that I was able to pull out and therefore redeploy uh, made sense in my circumstance. Um, maybe in sort of uh, fr from the question earlier around uh, Joseph's question around um, if he had a 3% and were to re uh, cash out refi at like, I don't know, six or seven, maybe um, depending on his circumstances and uh, the strategy behind it, it might or may might not make sense. Um, I think uh, Chris Ono mentioned this a, a bit too, but it might also be worth a consideration to, to do a HELOC instead too. Um, but ultimately, I think that the point that I'll make is that Mortgage rates are higher today than they were last year. That's a, everyone knows that, and this is kind of on the headlines everywhere too. Um, but um, it's important to think about mortgage rates relative to other costs of debt. Um, and even if mortgage rates are higher uh, now relative to last year, relative to other forms of debt um, that individuals could get, mortgages still tend to be um, very affordable, uh, a very cheap so source of debt. Yeah. And before we kind of move on to the spreadsheet too, I think it's going to give us a real life example of how maybe certain scenarios may play out. Um, I wanted to also think through like how we think about this for the future, right? I think there's a few circumstances here. We have it a, an example of Andrew where he actually went through a cash out refi this, this year. Um, Joseph with his 3% rate in um, his primary residence. What about those who are, you know, in the future, buying real estate today with a higher interest rate and building that equity, maybe in year one, year two, um, how does that look like for them? I think there, there are a couple of ways you can build equity. Uh, one is just your natural appreciation, right? Like the value of real estate going up incrementally year over year. That is one way. The other way is paying down the outstanding loan balance, which does the same thing. It's again, the delta between what your home value is and how much you owe. And that difference is equity. And so even in this higher interest rate, you're still going to be paying down your, you're still going to be paying down your loan uh, amount. And therefore you are still adding equity. So even in one or two years, it's definitely something that will contribute to building that equity for later to be cashed out, if that helps provide some context. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, May I add one thing too? I know we're talking about interest rate, but today is a pretty big day uh, in terms of the macro market. Our consumer price index and basically inflation for October came in lower than what was expected. 10-year treasury yield is down below 4%, and the mortgage interest rate went down a half a percent, which is a tremendous day. So I wanted to make sure that we called that out. Yeah, I think everybody's um, kind of celebrating today. So that's a that's a win, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think right now is a good time for us to get over to the spreadsheet. Um, Chris, are you, you ready for that? I'm ready. Let's do this. Perfect. Okay. Okay, um, Christina, if we can go to the cash out tab. Okay, perfect. Uh, so just to preface, um, 
as you're building equity into a home that you own, there are many ways to unlock this equity. One is an outright sale. The other one is a cash out refi. Uh, Joseph brought up a home equity line of credit that you can also do. Um, there's also a home equity loan that you can do. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing specifically on cash out, and we will go ahead and run through this scenario. Uh, the reason why I picked some of these numbers is our average home tends to be somewhere around 250K, and so we're going to go use this. So if you take a look at the purchase price, we're going to assume that the home you are going to buy is $250,000. We're going to assume that you're going to need a 20% down payment, which comes out to $50,000, which means the amount that you need from the bank is going to be $200,000, okay? And we have a mortgage interest, which is very realistic today to uh, look at the interest rate as 7.5%. That's what we have on our performa for our customers. And so we're going to assume that it's going to be a 7.5% interest rate when you borrow this 200 k we're also going to assume that the appreciation rate is 5%. Our, uh, a lot of our homes are in Houston. Last I checked, Houston was somewhere around 6.9% year over year, but we're going to be conservative and stay at 5%. Okay. And two things we want to think about when we are thinking about equity. Number one is appreciation, right? Year over year, the value of your home just grows incrementally. So that is one component of building this equity. Second component, which I touched on earlier, is the fact that you have a loan balance and every single month you are contributing towards that outstanding balance, right? And so we used seven and a half percent here. I just want to show you that there's an amortization tab down at the bottom. Christina, if you can click on that. This is actually built so that it is truly an amortization form. Uh, uh, formula. So assuming you have a 200k loan at seven and a half percent for 30 years, it gives me the monthly payment and it's able to calculate what your new balance is after each sub each monthly payment and subsequent months. So these are as close to as close to real numbers as we can try to get it for this exercise. So if we can go back to the cash out, that would be great, Christina. Thank you. Okay, so again, 250k home, you need 20% down, you come with 50K. You get another 200K in loan at 7.5% interest rate. Assuming the appreciation rate at 5%, this 150K is going to be at 319. Again, assuming 5% growth year over year. Okay. Earlier, I mentioned that cash out refi is essentially just taking on a new loan in replacement of the original loan. Okay, and this concept is important. Christina, can you scroll over to the left a little more? Perfect, thank you. Okay, so over here, we see the appreciation rate at 5%, five-year value after five years with a modest 5% appreciation. We're gonna say your home now is worth $319,000, okay? For cash out refi, you go and ask your mortgage broker or your bank or whomever it is that is servicing your mortgage or anybody to say, hey, I would like to do a cash out refi. They will do their appraisal and say, your home is worth $320,000. We will lend you up to 80% of that value. Okay. So 80% of 319 comes out to the new loan amount slash cash out of $255,000. Okay. So essentially... You're getting a new loan based off the new value of your home, and you're going to get $255,000. But you don't get a check for two hundred and fifty-five dollars You still have this original loan that you need to pay back. Okay. So originally, you had a loan for $200,000. But over the course of five years, you've paid back $10,000 of it. Or Maybe if it's a rental, your resident paid most of that for you, right? So how much you owe now, what used to be 200,000, is now 189, okay? So when you take a look at that, now that your new loan value is 319, the bank is saying you can borrow 80% of it, which is 255, of which you will pay back your original mortgage 
balance, which is now 189,000. We typically assume 2% for um, our closing cost, which is 2% of the purchase cost. And what nets you, what net you get after paying back the old loan balance and for the new loan is approximately $59,000. And what's important to note here is that this $59,000 is part of this new loan, which is different than saying this is income, which means it's not something that is taxed, but rather built into this new loan. So I'm going to pause there, and Christina, Andrew, uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But essentially, this is how it works, right? Value goes up. Theoretically, you're actually paying it down, and now you can leverage this delta with a new loan. Yep, and we're, we're pausing for a little bit to see if there's any questions related to this in the Q&A. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love that we have engagement. So if we have questions, I'm happy to answer it here too. So yeah. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, I was just going to say this is a super comprehensive breakdown. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I guess a, a sort of philosophical question. Um, I'm curious how you would think about sort of keeping or selling the home and therefore taking all of the equity out versus uh, keeping the home uh, and then cashing out? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, never a one size fits all and everything is based on strategy and goal. Um, but to be uh, quite frank, a sale is most likely where you're gonna net the most, right? There is cost associated with having to sell a property, whether it's through your marketplace that you know or using a listing agent there's going to be cost associated with it but the net amount that you're going to get back from an outright sale will always be higher than a cash out just because there's that loan to value ratio right the difference is on that income that you get when you sell the home there's going to be some tax repercussions based on how you do it which is why a 1031 is very um uh, desirable so that you can move it into another investment if that is your goal. I think a cash out is great if you're really focused on growing your portfolio, right? You are leveraging your initial 50,000 to be able to get another 59,000 in this example. All the while, you still have 20% into this new loan, which is 60K. So I've heard a good friend share with me. Um, this TikToker real estate investor guy who said something that was like, it really rang true for me. And he said like, my first home helped me buy my second home and my second home helped me buy my third. And to me, that is like very true. This first investment property that we ended up buying became my primary resident for a little while. And then afterwards, when we decided to move into the home that we're in, we did a cash out refi. And essentially more than the down payment required for this home, was provided by that home that I initially invested in. And so, you know, again, it depends on strategy. It depends on goal, but it is very, very powerful in a sense of being able to leverage what you initially put in. There's a lot of talk about cash flow being like very important. And often, unfortunately, this component gets overlooked. So I think that's why I wanted to spend some time on it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, was really curious how you thought about it. Um, I more or less adopted the mentality that uh um i've more or less adopted the mentality of like n never sell real estate if possible um unfortunately i've had to from time to time in the past um given there were homes that were in less desirable neighborhoods and lots of turnover and just a little bit too much of a, a me mental bandwidth for, for me to handle um but de definitely think sort of the cash out refi um, to be able to snowball into more homes uh, is a powerful strategy. Maybe with that, I, I could take, um, or we could take a D Daniel's uh, question in the chat here. Um, his question is around, um, after you pull out five, uh, pull out through a refi uh, after five years, um, the new monthly loan repayment is higher. Um, so effectively your loan amount is higher and therefore your monthly payment is higher as well. Um, Daniel asks uh, if Dorbess uh, recalculates 
the amount to charge tenants uh, in, in order to ensure um, that the consumer, uh, maybe in this instance, Daniel, um, isn't in the red. Um, do you um, do, 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 do you want to take the question or I, I can take it as well? I'm, I'm happy to take that question. Um, that's a very good call out. And it was one that if it wasn't asked, we, we uh, committed ourselves that we were going to talk about it. Yes, essentially you're taking a new loan at a higher amount. Therefore, your monthly payment will change, right? The amount that you need to pay month over month will change. Of course, over the course of five years, we anticipate rent growth just as much as we do with home appreciation, right? And especially with rental growth, they tend to be a lot quicker in terms of how quickly it's going up. Uh, but nonetheless, over the course of five years, uh, your home value rises, rent growth also rises alongside. Uh, we as DoorVest don't set our rental or lease amount based off of somebody's cash out refi, but based off of what the market is. What I can say from personal experience is when I pulled that cash out from my primary to move it over here, and when I um, took on that new loan payment, the market rent was uh, plenty to be able to pay for the loan and allow me to cash flow as well too, even alongside it. And so I think that is a good call out. Your monthly payment will go up, but the assumption is that rent is following. And so we don't anticipate the Delta to be too, too big. Uh, unless, of course, you see appreciation just skyrocket and rents haven't caught up. Yeah, I'll probably second that uh, as well. Uh, of course, case by case, as with like all of these questions as well, it really is dependent on an individual's uh, strategy and personal circumstances. Um, but whenever the timing is right, um, we're we're more than happy. Like our, our client partner team is more than happy to help you run through some numbers and whatnot. But generally speaking, I, I do think that um, the rents should continue. Given the rental appreciation uh, amounts, um, like rental growth amounts, um, it should be able to sustain the, the new incurred debt. Cool. Um, I, we have another one, and it's about how long does it typically take for a lender to complete a cash out refi? Yeah, um, really varies. Uh, a cash out refi process, uh, Joseph, I believe that um, it, it sounds like you already have a mortgage. So the cash out refi process is the, effectively almost the same uh, as a standard mortgage process. Um, the only difference is that there's no seller and there's no agents involved. Um, and so it should be able to move a, a little bit more uh, quickly, um, assuming that you're providing the documents in a timely manner and things of that nature. Um, so I, I'd probably I'd probably plan for about 30 days, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you, you, you'd be able to do it sooner than that. Um, I think to your second question around um, no noticing that Navy Federal Credit Union has a higher slash better LTV. Um, yeah, I mean, every lender is slightly different um, depending on the lender. Um, and, and so certain lenders have higher LTVs. Um, I would say the one um, defining mark is if you're doing a cash out refi on a primary residence, um, usually you should be able to go uh, to a higher LTV than on an investment home. I know in the example that Crisono painted here, it was an 80% LTV. Um, and I think that's probably the standard, uh, r r within range of the standard for an investment home. Primaries are, are, are more attractive than that. And lower yeah. interest rates too. Thank you, Andrew. One more thing I wanted to add. Um, higher LTV is great if you're looking to get uh, equity back into your hands to go and deploy or whatever plans you have. But understand that that means lesser amount being left on the home, which means essentially more bigger loan, higher loan payment, essentially. So that's that's the trade-off. And again, it depends on what your goal is. If it's more about getting as max cash as you can on hand, then yeah, a higher LTV would definitely make sense at the expense of a higher monthly payment. Right now, we'll open up the floor for more questions. It can be anything related to today's webinar. It could be anything related to DoorVest, investing in the market. Um, lay it on us, and we're excited to get you some answers. Um, so first question to Chris or Andrew. Um, we also talked a little bit about HELOC for a second and um, other methods and other strategies. Uh, such as the 1031 exchange. I know today we were focused on cash out refinance. Do you think we'll be talking about 1031 a little bit more in depth or a HELOC in the future? 
Yeah, I mean, we should. I think this; these are all really phenomenal strategies for real estate, uh, assuming that uh, there, there's interest from the audience. Um, but yeah, 1031 ones are definitely something that we as a uh, as a company have a lot of experience with. And I know Chris and I, Chris uh, and I have both uh, individually done 1031 ones as well. Um, and uh, HELOCs are also another really interesting one too, just given the interest rate uh, environment and. The fact that a lot of individuals like Joseph have locked in really low rates um, and so might not want to give up that low, low rate. Another one is going back to the cash out refi. How do the rates typically compare for a cash out refi compared to a 30 year conventional rate? Oh, that's a really good question. I think it depends on um, obviously your broker or um, you know, whatever the lender is that you were using, but I think it, it's it's pretty similar. I don't think there is an additional delta that at least I'm aware of. Uh, but again, we have a lot of partners uh, here that we're happy to connect you with if you're curious and want to get in some live rates. Chris, um, may, maybe a question for for you would be uh, in, in terms of. Uh, when did you first think about cash out refis? I'm um, curious how, like what, what that journey and what that thought process went into before you ultimately pulled the trigger. Uh, I think you mentioned it was on your, your primary at the time. Yeah, it was, uh, it was actually a little before that. When I first bought our first investment home that eventually became our first primary home, we were still in Los Angeles and we bought it in Austin knowing that we were gonna eventually move here. Um, soon after I had a couple of friends who said, I've been always wanting to invest in real estate. Can we go ahead and partner up and do, uh, you know, an investment together? So we ended up buying a duplex with a group of three, including us. Uh, and, uh, we said for five years, we're not going to touch this home. And then at that five year point, we will decide what we want to do with this home. Uh, at that point in time, one of the partners wanted to exit. So we ended up selling. Uh, but we were surprised, almost shocked at how much we were able to extract compared to our initial investment over the course of five years of loan paid down and just appreciation. And then so from there, my real estate journey kind of really started going. Uh, and then that's when I knew, that's when I found out that we were very uh, emotionally tied to this home that we still have because it was our first primary and it was our first uh, investment home. And so we asked our lenders like, hey, you know, like we've heard about this thing called cash out refi. I really don't know what it is, but I would love to be able to keep the home because it's our first. And if, you know, the numbers make sense. And that's when they got to explain to me. And I was like, wow, this is pretty incredible. You're telling me I can keep this home, rent it out, make money, and then I could take the equity out and go buy my new home. Like, that is incredible. So I think that's that's probably when it really kind of clicked to to say like, wow, this is a real powerful vehicle. And Chris, Chris, I really like that you brought up, you know, there was a lot of emotions tied to the investment property. I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's a large purchase. Um, and we always say like, you know, you have to really compartmentalize your emotions when you're investing, right? How do you um, encourage others being to kind of compartmentalize their emotions when they're thinking about investing in real estate? Uh, being that it's your first, it's always hard. I think there's that sentimental piece. My son grew up there, uh, but that's not to say it's completely out of the question, right? If it's going to be a vehicle that we can, let's consider selling, being able to maybe 1031 into a much bigger asset class, which I'm aspiring to get into, um, then I think it's definitely worth it. I know it's hard when it's your first, uh, but it's different when it becomes your second, third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, and so I can understand the first one, second or third one, you probably won't have that and it'll be a lot easier. That's amazing. Um, okay, so I think we have some more questions here. Um, another question is related to the rental rates that we're seeing. Um, so have we began to see rental rates increasing this year, um, especially to like keep up with the mortgage rates that are jumping as well? I could take that one. Um, historically speaking, um, and I, I probably need a little bit of support on it, but uh, 
historically speaking, I think we've seen across all markets about a seven or so percent uh, rental growth rate per year on average. Was that right? If anyone knows top of mind, yeah, about seven percent. Um, that moves the needle quite a bit. Um, I don't think it was enough to, in the short term, it hasn't been enough to uh, catch up with sort of the difference in your monthly mortgage servicing. Um, so the short answer is no. Um, the longer answer is kind of what Chris Ono me mentioned earlier, which is like rents grow. And if, you, if anyone looks at a chart of rental growth over time, it's literally a straight line up into the right. It just takes some time. Um, and so if it doesn't catch up this year, maybe next year, maybe next year, depending on what the rental growth assumptions are. Perfect. And, oh, okay, we have a, a question more related to Dorvis as a company. Are the investment properties owned by Dorvest? I think this is a very common question that um, we get when customers are newer to our platform. So yeah, maybe Andrew, you can you can take this one. Yeah, um, yeah. So the the I guess long and short answer as well. Um, the short answer is uh, at the end of the at, at the at the end of the journey, the consumer um, will own the home in its entirety. Um, in in order for us to make it easy uh, and sort of this online experience for customers to buy an investment home, we actually buy the home first in order for us to do heavy renovations and lease out the home. Um, once the home is in sort of its bulletproofed and income generating, uh, bulletproofed and income generating uh, position, um, then then the consumer purchases the home, uh, and then uh, the consumer has full uh, full access to title, uh, and then we just um, we just serve as a property and asset manager ongoing. Thanks. Rishma, we, we hope that answered your question, but the, the short answer is no, you will be owning the property outright. And Dorvest does not have any type of like ownership in the property. So there's an off topic question, but I love it, Daniel. Thank you. Um, it's definitely my realm with the marketing space. Um, so Daniel's question is, is there an affiliate program or a referral program? Um, so yes, we have an affiliate program. You can sign up for us in the Rakuten affiliate network. Um, and then separately, we do have a referral program as well. Um, so you can check that out. I'll be sure to include the link to it um, as a follow-up. Um, well, we're about to wrap up here. I'm going to give it another minute to see if there's any more questions that you would like to ask. Again, it does not have to be about cash out refinance. It could be anything about Dorvest or the economy, or just fun questions in general too, um, before we kind of wrap up here, show you uh, an update um, with the company and uh, yeah, get going here. Just dropping a comment, Joseph, that Dave Ramsey is pretty solid and got a lot of respect for him too. So I can, I can see how uh, it's tough making that decision, but He's great. Yep. We're, we're happy to help. If there's any other questions that you're still kind of uh, thinking about, you can feel free to reach out to us at clientpartners.dorvest.com. You can schedule a call. It's entirely free, no obligation. You can talk to somebody on our team um, and they're more than happy to share any useful resources with you, walk you through more in-depth questions or refer you to somebody who can answer your questions. Can I view all your previous Zoom calls like this? Yes, we have um, all the recordings are uploaded to our YouTube channel. So again, I can share um, that link with you all in a follow-up. I wanted to share a quick update with you all that we are doing a holiday promo. And um, this time around, we're doing a $1,500 in rewards for closing on some of these Dorvest properties. Again, a link to this will be shared with you in a follow-up but we're doing a $1,000 Amazon gift card and $500 in Dorvest maintenance credits for a few homes here. Um, they're all fully renovated and ready to go. So you can look at the full details of the home renovation and anything else. Um, so for anybody new here, this is how a home profile will typically look like. You'll see you know, the after photos, um, the pre-reno photos as well. 
And we have a lot of details here for you to help you do your due diligence. So we have the comps here, the financials, um, neighborhood, et cetera. Highly encourage you all to check this out and take a look at our homes available um, and definitely reach out to client partners who can walk you through this more in depth. All right. And with that, we're closing out. Thank you so much for your time today. We are so appreciative that you joined us and stayed to the very end. Hope you all uh, learned a lot here. And if you have any feedback or anything you would like to see in our next webinar, definitely email it to us at clientpartners at doorvest.com or marketing at doorvest.com. Again, thank you so much for your time and have a good rest of your day. Bye. This is great. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.